Hello again, everyone. Welcome back to Expeditions Rome. Let's head down here to the Court of Heaven. Let's go. Let's see if we can recruit a foreign legion. Doing okay on food. It'll get better as we start expanding and everything like that. The elders of the Berber tribes, tribes in Nesomenes have been called to convene at an oasis. Uh, they call this congregation the Court of Heaven. Alright. Can I actually move you? No. I mean, to a certain extent, it doesn't matter where they're positioned, but... Well, <clears throat> it's not a big deal. Tribal meeting site. Ooh, I like the water. Welcome to the Court of Heaven, the most important annual meeting of the Elders and the reason for our presence. It is an honor to have you among us. The honor is mine, but I'd like to know what I'm walking into first. Of course. What do you want to know? What is this place? The Court of Heaven is the name of both the place and the event. Each year, the elders of the tribes gather here to solve their differences and make crucial decisions. It is also an opportunity for people to present their problems to the elders. It is this court's duty to dispense justice, providing the issue is important enough. Last but not least, the Court of Heaven attracts merchants from all over Nazamones and beyond. Where there are people, there will always be commerce. Hmm, that sounds good. Who are all these people? Merchants and mercenaries, the rich and the poor. Everyone has a reason to be here, just like you. Some people make things happen, others watch things as they happen. It is up to you to decide what you will be, a maker or a watcher. Oh, I'll be a maker, all right. Uh, is there anything specific I should do? I suggest you walk around and breathe in the air. Meet some people and talk to them. Trade if you want. Since you are here as my guest, you are free to go anywhere. All right. Uh, what can I expect during the meeting? We might encounter some hostility. Make no mistake, the minor tribes will do whatever I tell them to do. It's the elders of the major tribes I am worried about. Hmm, Not okay. everyone likes the Romans. Some elders may see your presence as a direct attack on our autonomy. Uh, they can see my presence however they please. I really don't care. Uh, that could be trouble. Any recommendations? Do not speak unless spoken to. Try to be respectful and diplomatic. I can do that. In a way, this is our Senate. All will be fine if we don't offend anyone. Now, that said, I cannot guarantee that we will not offend anyone. Oftentimes, there's a situation where not offending one person means that you're offending the other person. And trying not to offend that person means that you offend the first person. So, sometimes you have to decide... Which of them is worth offending and which one you do not want to offend? Uh, is there anyone that I should be wary of? Isil and Mador are the most respected elders among us. Convincing them both would be a significant diplomatic victory. I have lots of coins. Dad may get in our way, but you never know with him. And then there's young Womaxan who's always hot blooded. Uh, what is the uncertainty with Udad? As far as his influence goes, Udad is on par with Mador. Except he is more of a traditionalist. He prays to his ancestors two times a day, dawn and dusk, hoping they would answer his questions. Ancestors? We believe our dead ancestors watch over us. That's why we pray to them. Uh, there is actually uh, an element of some of that in uh, Roman and Greek myth as well. Will this... Ormaxan give me trouble? A young man trying to impress his elders? Always a dangerous thing. He is renowned for his prowess in combat, 
but his diplomatic ability leaves much to be desired. That is worrying. A man after my own heart. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll have you talk to him then, Bestia. Uh, we'll find a way to convince him. I believe we shall. Okay. Address the elders of the Berber tribes. But first, we can explore. So that's how I get out of here. Let's go talk to a scrap trader. I have trinkets and I take iron. Dang it. I sell iron. I sell you things others want to get rid of. If you want unwanted things, you're at the right tent. Yeah, unfortunate that uh, I cut off his uh, conversation, or his uh, little opening line. Uh, just iron. Not everything here looks like it's made of iron. In other words, you sell junk. Who would want things nobody wants? Just iron. Not everything here is looks like it's made of iron. What are you? A scholar of metal? I'm a scholar of many things. I know metal better than anyone else. If I say it's iron, then it is iron. Hmm. End of discussion. Look at what I have to offer and tell me what attracts your curiosity. This seems like an undignified line of work. Uh, now that I look closer, everything here is indeed made of metal. We have a lot of items here. What do you think would be interesting for me? I don't think we need to. That seems like that might offend him. Now that I look closer, everything here is indeed made of metal. Did you think I was trying to deceive you? What I sell here is true metal and true metal only. You have a lot of items here. What do you think would be of, would be interesting for me? Have you seen these weighted blades? They are of high quality. And maybe you need some tools intended for javelins. Great craftsmanship there. But since you're Roman, you might be interested in this old helmet. It's a bit dented, but I'm sure you'll like it. Mind if I look at that helmet? A desperate treasure hunter sold it to me near Utica. It's ugly and battered indeed. Uh, I took it off his hands out of pity. Domina, look at these inscriptions. P. C. S. Huh? Publius Cornelius Scipio. By the limping leg of Hephaestus, this is the helmet of the famous general Scipio Africanus. An item of infinite value. <laughs> I, I love that exclamation. Cineros. Let's not raise our voices too much. I love that, uh, um, that line. I might be able to reuse the iron. I'll take this junk off your hands for 50 denarii. Uh, no. Why can I not have a middle option of, uh, eh, how about 500? A general who defeated Hannibal? How would such a helmet end up here? <laughs> that is impossible to say, but there is no doubt in my mind. The design of this helmet is from the right time period. Perhaps he gave it away in an exchange of gifts after the Battle of Zama. Scipio Africanus was without a doubt among the greatest strategists of all time. This helmet is a priceless artifact. I'll pay a thousand. I don't want to risk losing the option of getting it. And 50 is way too low. That is a fair price indeed. Cunning I salute your honesty. Oh, I didn't know that. I guess there are people whose knowledge of metal exceeds mine. Yep, that would be me. Thank you, Roman. You could have easily deceived me, but you did not. You will always be welcome in my tent. You're welcome. I don't a mind. fair price for a quality product. Okay, weighted blades. How many will you sell me? Ten? For two thousand? Let's go for five. For a thousand. A good decision. Anything to look at them and decide. We'll take five. A good decision. Anything else? Uh, no. Wally. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at this helmet. Uh, Scipio Africanus' helmet, two. Uh, all resistance is seven. Crit chance, one percent. Health, two. If you end your turn with your attack action still remaining, 
You'll start your next turn with two attack. Oh my god. Oh my god. That's good. Uh, let's see. So you'll get a little bit more health. Um, crit chance goes down, and all resistances go down. But we may try to remake this. I think that uh, you can have that. Bestia. Oh yeah. No, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta check that. Let them, let them see that. Let's let's let everyone see that uh, that, that plume. That's good. Okay. Alright, very nice. I like those buildings out there. Eh, I didn't need to cheat him. I like being cunning, this but... This is by far the largest council gathering I have ever attended. Oh, do tell? No, nothing else to say? Okay. Take a look at what I have to sell you. Oh, okay. The famous Roman everyone's been talking about. Welcome to the only store you will ever want to visit at the court of heaven. I got a really My fancy store, hat. My store, though humble by your standards, is at your service. Ah, I didn't know I was famous. Your store is not humble. You have a lot of things to sell. Yeah, I'll go with that. I am flattered. I know my store pales in comparison to the ones in Rome, but in Court of Heaven, you will find no better place to trade. That much, I can assure you. Tell me, what do you desire? Ah, oh, that's such an open-ended question. Trying to run a store in the middle of this chaos all by yourself. Aren't you afraid of getting robbed or cheated? Are you affiliated with any particular tribe? Ah, oh, well, that's such an open-ended question. I mean within the boundaries of what I can provide you with at this stall, of course. I can't grant you immortality yet. <laughs> well, if you ever do learn how, uh, look me up first. Uh, trying to run a store in the middle of this chaos all by yourself. Aren't you afraid of getting robbed or cheated? On the contrary. It helps my business. Everyone underestimates me and pays the price. Literally, in most cases. I'm not afraid of anyone. They are afraid of me. Do you, you want to come to our camp and, and join the Legion? trade there. That's fine with me. Um, are you affiliated with any particular tribe? Of course. There is no way not to be. I do not hail from any tribe you would ever have heard of, however. My tribe is quite small, but we have good relations to both Lunia's tribe and Udad's. Yeah, well, let me see what you have in stock. Alright, let's see. Abundant slaves, scarce denarii. Okay, I don't really have anything to trade. Uh, I don't have enough medicine and rations at the moment to get her money. And if she doesn't want... Yeah, I mean... Well... It's not the best price, but... I got a lot. Yeah, I'll just take all her money. Anyway, not using these guys for anything else. What about rations? Nope. You can have, you can Will keep five that coins. Be all? Uh, I may return later. There is someone to talk to over here. There is no way we can compensate for that. Ask him if he would accept twenty jugs of Carthaginian wine instead. Settle for no more than thirty. Axel. Hello. Romans, the spirits must have led you here to my little corner. How fortuitous. I need a little bit of your time and your guidance. Would you be willing to extend your helping hand? You need my guidance? But I'm a foreigner in these lands. That is precisely why I need you. The guidance I seek is for lands beyond this one. You are a warrior, are you not? If death is what you deal, 
It must stand to reason that you'd know death and the lands of the dead. My name is well, Axel. I, that, but... <laughs> I am what you might call a philosopher in your language. Though to my own people, I am a shaman. My life's work is to study and explore the many lands beyond death and how they vary from culture to culture. Who would be interested in reading about what other cultures experience after death? Surely everyone wants to know what awaits themselves. Well, that is one of the questions I am trying to explore. Is it truly based on what we believe? Or where we are born? Or to whom? I myself am inherently fascinated by the idea of these different afterlives. But when I finish this book, I hope it will serve as a kind of travel guide. Hmm. I know where I'm going after I die. I am Roman through and through. I suppose none of us can ever be completely certain where death may take us. I have no interest in the afterlife. I find uh, I will find out everything when I die. I suppose none of us can ever be completely certain when where death may take us. You understand me then. Humble group. Right. On the matter of transitioning from one life to the next, there can never truly be certainty. Besides, as scholars, we must seek the truth for no other reason than to enlighten ourselves. I'm not exactly sure why you need my help specifically. I have collected much knowledge of our own afterlife, but I have never had the opportunity to learn what awaits Romans after death. Do you want to ask about something specifically Roman? Precisely. I have interviewed several scholars on the subject of the afterlife, but those were all of Africa. It is my theory that one's afterlife depends on the gods one believes in. I simply want to know about what kind of afterlife Roman gods provide. What if I don't believe in any gods? I could tell you some stories. I could tell you some stories. We'll I'll go with need that. more than that. I'll need detailed descriptions. Well, let us say I decide to help you. How do you even know I'll tell the truth? You have the look of a trustworthy individual. And I know Romans are proud of their virtues. Is it not so? I may later enlist the help of another Roman who would prove you wrong and reveal that you have deceived me. In that case, I would at least know what part of the afterlife Romans like to lie about. That's fair. Uh, very well. Tell me what I have to do. First, walk me through the typical journey of the deceased according to your culture. Imagine you are dead. What happens then? Your soul separa is separated from your body and travels to Dis, our underworld. You have to pay Karen so he can ferry, ferry you across the river Acheron. If you can get past uh, Cerberus, the judges will determine your fate. The virtuous end up in Elysium, while the worthless and the wicked suffer in Tartarus. I can't really know for sure without traveling to Dis myself. Um, some of these are Greek, and I don't know how much of that is uh, was believed by Romans. But, um, I'll go with the first one. On its own? Hmm, interesting. We have to find our own way to the Duat. But they say the path is different for each person. Well, and you have to pay Karen so he can ferry you across the river Acheron. A river? Now that sounds pleasant. But do you carry your own money to the underworld? Uh, you do not. For this reason, it is good to bury the dead with a coin in their mouth. Of course. We also believe it is best to bury the dead with their belongings. That way, they can live a good life in Siket Aru. Uh, if you can get past Cerberus, the judges will determine your fate. Assessors. We have 42 of them. It is best to know their names and the sins they have not committed. Once you pass their judgment, Anubis weighs your heart against a feather of Mart. A pure heart isn't heavy. And the virtuous end up in Elysium, while the worthless and, and the wicked suffer in Tartarus. This Elysium sounds like Siket Aru. Osiris permits only the pure spirits to the field of reeds. 
Yeah, maybe it is the same place. I highly doubt that. That would certainly make my task easier, though. And I can't really know for sure without traveling to Deese myself. You are right, of course. But I have an idea. Look. This weed is called Cat's Eye. They say it will bring you to the land of the dead temporarily. Oh, this scene's safe. It would be great if you'd try it and tell me what you saw there. Uh, why don't you do it yourself? What if I can't come back? Dying is very near the bottom of my list of plans, sorry. Uh, I'll do it. Let's see where this goes. And then I have a Logos option. You're asking me to risk death. It's only fair that I get something in return, and if I should find myself stuck in the land beyond life, I should hate to be caught without enough coin to pay Karen. Uh, why don't you do it yourself? Naturally, I was the first to try it myself. But I'm certain you will visit a different underworld than I. And what if I can't come back? You should not worry. I have tried it myself multiple times. And as you see, I always came back. You're asking me to risk death, etc. You're right. 600 dinar. I happen to have some Roman denarii on me. Please, take these with you. Okay, let's see what happens. What's a little bit of, uh... Mental substances to, uh... See what awaits us in death. Aw, oh, kitty! Afterlife tri- oh. Wait. Not that. Let's see what we got. Quests. Afterlife travel guide. Let's go ahead and track this one. Explore your afterlife. There's a giant cat here. You should talk to the giant cat? You have met a shaman at the court of heaven who wishes to compile a book of stories from the afterlife. He's asked your help to journey to your afterlife and tell him what, you ex what you've experienced upon your return. Broken boat. Floating columns. Could walk up there, but can't do much else. Kitty! Let's go see the kitty. Hi, kitty. Salve. Oh, look at the giant cat portrait. Uh, who are you? I am you. I'm a cat? You were exactly one lifetime ago. But you are not a very good cat. Cats have to live through nine lives. We die and then we are reborn. But a wicked cat is reborn as a lowly human. I am you in a past life. Okay, what are you? I am a cat. What kind of cat are you? I've never met a talking cat before. A talking cat? Maybe they had nothing to say to you. Sir. Maybe you should ask better questions. Obvious questions produce obvious answers. I mean, I keep asking who's a good kitty, and they never tell me who's a good kitty. Am I dead? Do you remember dying? I don't. Most people remember such important events in their life. It is not you who is dead. What am I supposed to do here? A very good question. Do you even remember your purpose? Revenge, conquest, duty, survival. Well, duty. Doesn't that mean your life is defined by the orders of someone else? Uh, everyone takes orders from someone else. Nobody forces me to follow their orders. I have no other options. Yeah, nobody forces me to follow their orders. Yet you still do. The mark of a good commander is how they talk you into following their orders without making you feel forced. Exactly. I may seem wise to you. But wisdom comes with age and identity. I know you, because I am you. Or rather, I was you in a past life. I do not enjoy life as a human. But you can save me by leading a good life and not causing pain. Only then will we be reborn as a cat. Yeah, I'm kind of le leading wars. I, I don't think that uh, uh, not causing pain is going to uh, be a thing. Uh, will I be a giant cat? Unlikely, but stranger things have happened. 
Well, I don't want to cause pain. I just kind of have to. But you do. In pursuing your ambitions, you hurt those in your path. You must ask yourself if it's all worth it. I mean, to a certain extent, we'll have to wait and see. I have to do what I must. And when that's done, you will lie around all day and enjoy life. You can do that now. Cats do it every day. Yeah, but they usually have someone who uh, has money to provide for them. What do you propose? The only way you can stop hurting people is to leave the land of the living. You may stay here if you want and trade places with me. That way I will be reborn as a cat and you will be a good woman. I know this is all very confusing for you, but let me make it simpler. I shall present you with two doors. One of them leads to the Elysium of Reeds. The other, back to the Court of Heaven. I might have Think to save this it. and try both. Figure out which one feels right, and go where your heart leads you. Okay. Uh, one door leads to Elysium, the other will take you back to the Land of the Living. I haven't exactly indicated which one goes where. Well, you know what? It is about time to end the episode. I think we're going to have to uh, figure out uh, which one goes where next time. See you then, everyone.